Hi, once again. Um, thought I'd go live again today because I've been thinking about how feelings are coming up for all the people. Um, perhaps for you, certainly for myself. And there's a double-edged sword with this. And by the way, if you notice, I've got a prefix on my talks now, so I'm going down a rap, not rabbit hole, excuse me. I'm following a path now speaking about keys to having more self-mastery, which is why I'm putting this talk out. Um, this is number five, as you could have figured out from the title. And I'll tell you more about that if you want to message me. Because I'm, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> feelings. We all have feelings, emotions, experiences, stuff like that. And they can work for or against us. And the key I want to speak to primarily is how do you navigate that? I should say the question I'm going to ask you is how do you navigate that? Because especially now with the, was the latest instruction that came down from on high about self-isolation, don't leave the house for anything unless it's, in, unless it's like critical necessity. It's changing a lot of people's state. Positive feelings, negative feelings, both feelings. And so what I want to speak to is a couple of things. And I'm going to drop some hints, by the way, because there's some things that I'm offering and those things that I'm brewing that I want to talk about. I'll make all the links in the comments. I'm not sure yet. Anyway, so feelings. I keep having that song in my head. <laughs> you know the song I'm talking about, I'm sure. A friend of mine posted earlier today about, um, like on a scale of 1 to 10, how do you feel right now? And I said, I'm feeling about a 6 or 7, give or take. You know, because I'm just witnessing what's going on and being more observant and less um, attached to what's going on. So one of the keys to navigating your feelings is how attached are you to certain things outside of yourself? Like are you externally triggered or externally controlled by what's happening around you? And nowadays with what's going on in the media and the news, there's a lot of stuff out there that's trying to control it. Well, excuse me. A lot of things out there that might feel like they can control our feelings. This is the funny thing. As extreme as those become, as extreme as that, as that, be, that feels like, frankly, it's not true. The piece about controlling your feelings. Yes, there's some big stuff happening out in the world, but you have, I have, we have, full dominion about how we choose to do something, what we choose to do with that. I did. I talked the last time in, my, in episode four of this. I talked a few a couple of days ago about um, response versus reaction. This is part of the same thing again. I know response and reaction needs to be my core element I keep teaching from because emotional balance, feelings of good or bad, are really about response versus reaction still. It's on the, I, I keep coming at the same theme, so what can I say? So here's the piece I want to make sure you get. With what's happening in the world, and especially what's happening in this country because it's like a domino effect through all the countries, there's a lot of, a lot of justifiable cause to feel upset whether that's fear what's going on or a certainty of a lack or not being able to get what you want. I, I, I actually had a res rather um, irrational fear, not fear, upset come, showed up yesterday because when we were told that we we're going to be shut down, not able to go anywhere. Now, in case you don't know my work, I work from home. I work from a laptop. I work from a phone. I do a lot of live streaming through my, you know, with my own lights and everything at home. I don't have to go anywhere. And so I would only go out once I'd probably only go out socially or go to the store once a week or so. Now I can no longer go out except to go to the store <laughs> and I'm supposed to stay home. I feel more antsy. I mean, it sounds counterintuitive. Like I'm doing what I was doing before, but now there's a rule about it. So I feel more rebellious. Go figure. But that's kind of what I'm aware of is that I have my own internal process going on. Now, for some people, that feeling of being contained, controlled might have a lot of other... Um, uh, what's the word looking for? Other impacts, that's probably a better word to put it. Maybe feeling more impacted by the fact that maybe you can't go to work anymore, which I understand if you're going through that, it's a painful experience. I'm actually very grateful in a lot of ways because I do have dominion over my career choice and dominion over my work because I can do it from basically anywhere I have, I have signal. Now, if the internet goes down, I'm in trouble. <laughs> and lovers would be because if you don't have internet, you don't have social media. But also coaching and stuff like that is done through my, you know, through my live streams, through my phone calls and through working with clients. And I'll let you know right now, because some people are going through some challenges emotionally. I offered to my email list last week, so I'm going to offer it to you publicly now. If you're feeling a bit out of sorts and you want to give them support, if you want to just get a sliding scale coaching session, meaning pay what you want, message me. I'm just offering that as a gift. If you want to pay nothing, we'll talk about that. But if you want to pay something, we can work that out too. So message me, over social, message me over social media if you want to get some direct support and we can set up a phone call. I'm going to give Cindy a calendar link and we can work that out. So that's one thing I'm offering right now. Because a lot of people are feeling knocked out of sorts. They're not being knocked sideways. And again, that's sliding scale again. It's not like it's my fixed normal fee. I'm doing this special right now. 
maybe extending for a couple of days, but certainly today. It's a Friday, feeling free, feeling happy, feeling gr 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 um, generous. Gen yeah, grateful and generous. So that's an offer for you. But the thing is, that you have to, you, first, let me, let me back up a second. How, how present are you to what you're feeling? How current are you with looking in the mirror in your own eyes, perhaps, or looking inside yourself and saying, how do I really feel right now? Maybe you've had a certain um, subconscious sense of disquiet going on for a few days and you didn't even know you were doing it. Maybe so, I don't want to say it this way, but maybe so um, in what you're doing, you're actually forgetting your feelings. Because in the good and bad scale of things with feelings, when you start to trust and resonate with your feelings, you have a lot more wisdom show up. In fact, being aware of your feelings is a really smart move because you have hunches, intuitions, gut feelings, stuff like that happening all the time, which show up through your feelings, not through your thinking. So when you start to tap in and connect into your feelings, you actually get more information. So avoiding your feelings isn't recommended at all. So it's right up front. Secondly, when you check into your feelings, do they overwhelm you or do you have dominion? Now, I don't mean suppressing them, but I'm talking about how sometimes you don't even want to look at your feelings because you know if they show up, you'd be so flooded you won't have to do what, know what to do with them. So that's a key as well. Third, third <laughs> piece is when you are aware of your feelings, what do you do with them? Do you, dis do you dis um, dispute them? Do you fight them saying, oh, that's not true, that's not right? Or do you listen to them and see what they have to tell you? Because in a lot of ways, feelings are communication methods. They're, they're actually letting you know where you feel in balance and out of balance. So it's actually a tool to navigate your life, especially now with so much stuff going on out there. To be able to tune in inside and to start listening inside is a huge gift you have for yourself. And we all have that if you just listen inside. So recognizing that you have a resource inside, which is your feelings, is a powerful place to move to. And when you do that, and again, I can help you with that if you want support, you can start to discern what's really yes, what is really right and wrong, like yes and no for you. What are you being pulled to and what are you being, what are you being pulled from? What are you feeling attached to? What are you feeling aware, aware, um, afraid of? Your feelings can be useful when you use them that way. Now, for a lot of people, I would say mostly men, for a lot of people, emotions have no use. That's not accurate, but that's what they think. I did for a long time myself, so I understand that one. But when you start to recognize that feelings are a form of messaging, they're a form of understanding, they're a barometer, so to speak, for your mood, your energy, they can come in very handy. But when you don't listen to that, that's when you're in trouble. So I'm suggesting right up front is get clear about what it is you're feeling. Now, with that, you also want to be able to discern what's accurate, what's inaccurate, because sometimes feelings show up, as I mentioned earlier about the reaction versus response piece. Sometimes feelings show up that are out of reaction to something that happened outside versus response. And sometimes those feelings can be out of alignment. So I'm not saying that everything you feel is accurate, but I am saying be willing to listen to get a gauge, a range and a spectrum of what you're feeling and then discern what's accurate for you. So it means being willing to face, to listen to, and to invite in your emotional expression. Not easy, I know, for a lot of people. That's why I've been working that path myself. I've been doing it for my clients for the last, well, 10 years, is to understand that piece. And so when you recognize that you have dominion over your feelings and you can feel what you're feeling and understand what it means to you, is a powerful place to navigate from. Because first of all, it makes you honest. When you're honest with yourself by feeling, that changes a lot of things as well because you understand by looking at the world through the lens of clarity and being honest with yourself that things start to make a lot more sense. For those people who have been denying their feelings, you might be thinking oh, it'll make a lot of sense now. I would suggest you may be inaccurate. So understanding your feelings is a key part of this, to actually embrace them and to, as my friend Katie says, to feel the feels, as she puts it, is a wise choice as long as you don't get overwhelmed or flooded by them. Because emotional flooding isn't healthy. That's a whole, whole other conversation. I had to happen with clients. That's not fun. But when you start to feel what you feel and recognize that it's a teaching moment for yourself to listen in and to find out what they mean to you, then you can never, go, never get where you want to go. So I said earlier about the, the reaction versus response. Feelings can give you also feedback about responding. Again, if you're reacting from something and you get emotional baggage from that, that's usually not accurate. But when you start to have feelings show up about something you want to respond to, so somebody says something to you or asks you about something or you get an invitation or there's something being instructed from the government and you want to respond to that different from reaction, then notice the emotions that show up on that side. 
because some of the things that show up may be very helpful, very accurate. Maybe you want to stand, maybe you feel like I need to stand up for myself. I can feel this, this ownership showing up inside, which is great. You can stand in that place. But if it's fear showing up, nine times out of 10, fear is a reminder where you're not, you're not aligned with something. There's a lot of acronyms for fear, like fear, um, was it, was it, um, fear is, is false expectations appearing real is one of them. No one is face everything and rise. Another one is um, fear every no. I think it's fear everything and run. <laughs> There's a few out there. So fear has a many, many different labels <clears throat> and acronyms. But the recognition is that fear is an indicator too. However, this to be clear, because in teaching I've had many, many years, there's two levels of fear. There's real survival fear, which is reptilian level, reptilian brain level, instinct to get the F out. That's the flight, that's the, the um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the, 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 the fear, sorry, excuse me, the, the <laughs> it went out of my head. The, the uh, flee, freeze or f freeze, f freeze, flee. There's two others that come back to me. Anyway, the bottom line is fear is a interesting place to play. But when you start to recognize that it's a messenger, again, like all the emotions, then you can start to decide what you want to do with it. And when you're responding to things that happen in the world, you have a much more masterful place to play from. That's why I call this self mastery, because when you start to navigate your own emotional experience and own those keys inside yourself and start to recognize how your emotions are tools to help you understand more clearly yourself and what's happening around you in a way that works that's when life starts to move in a positive direction and that's true self-mastery so this is a little talk i'm going to give there's a couple of the pieces that we're going to drop in excuse me a second once i just rewind self-mastery feelings understanding oh yes sidebar slightly i've been somewhat immersed in and fascinated by the, the concept of you or this, this conversation of human design and one of my friends Beth Davis has been talking about some interesting stuff recently it's been triggering me just to be clear but once you, you get coming back to if you've ever studied human design if you want to find out more about that message me I'll tell you so I'll give you some links um, in human design there are two things that are important which when you know these things then you come clear and let me grab the piece of paper so I can remember what I wrote <laughs> Excuse me a second, I'll be right back. I'm just grabbing the sheet. Okay. Um, there's, that's what it was. The two S's is your strategy and your signature. And basically these two pieces, actually three. No, hang on a second. <laughs> two things, okay. Hey Astrid, nice to see you. So one of them is your strategy. The other one is your, your inner authority. Now, people say inner authority. If you look up human design, you study what your child is, you'll discover what your inner authority is. My one, personally, is an emotional authority. So this is why this feeling stuff is kind of relevant to me. I never really um, studied this stuff before. I never really looked at emotions as being an authority place to come from. They're always secondary to mental um, acuity, mental skill, mental awareness. And, you know, I was very proud of my, my um, um, IQ tests and stuff. Well, let's talk about the EQ tests, emotional quotient. So when you understand your inner authority, and that mine has to be emotional authority, it really gives me pause to look at how I live life. Because one of the things about emotional authority is it's not an immediate response type process. It's a um, contemplate focus, which is why I'm talking about this stuff now, about our feelings are things to be interpreted and to contemplate to understand what they mean. Because that's where my strength is, I discovered. And it's changing my life and my perspective on how I work, what do I do, who do I speak to, how do I teach, all that stuff. So understanding what your inner authority is and your strategy, which is part of human design, it really gives you a gift on how to work on that. So I'll, I'll put the, um, message me if you want the links. I'm not gonna put links in the comments because I'm gonna post this video other places and I don't wanna put links there. So if you wanna find out about human design, I'll send you a couple of links and check it out and work at your own chart. And if you have questions, reach out to me. I can give you what I know, which is this much because Beth knows this much. I can invite to the group that she runs because she has great teachings every week. But the other thing about this I want to speak to is there's an understanding of who we are that we may not yet know. And at the simplest level, as I was talking earlier, is if you understand your emotional expression has value, that can just change your whole paradigm of what your life's about. So again, if you want to get, I did offer my pay what you want slash sliding scale sessions. If you're interested in that, let me message over Facebook, over social media. 
home design if you're questioning about that send me a message over social media as well and the third piece just a quick nudge i've been talking this for a while now because we postponed it from last tuesday to next tuesday katie <clears throat> katie carson and myself are launching inspired heart mastery which is really about what this mastery course is about and we're going to be launching that next tuesday we pushed it back a week because of all the news that came out about the cv stuff as she calls it the beer virus just to save them not to use the public name for it. it's like <laughs> <laughs> it that shall not be named to quote someone from Harry Potter um, so this is going to be a teaching hi Danielle I see you thanks for the love so that starts next year so we push it back a week because of what's going on and so if you want to find out more about that we did a face we did a, a zoom call on Tuesday that we can't find <laughs> so I can't show you the replay with you if you want to find out more about that send me a message I'll give you the link so you can go check it out for yourself it's a mastermind starts next Tuesday it's an investment a commitment and a dedication to your life that runs for eight weeks and we got some great stuff brewing for you it's called Inspired Art Mastery, and we're going to rock you and the life you want to live. So with that, I thank you for watching. If you have any questions about this, please message me. Comments below, and I'll respond when I sign off. And as always, as a reminder to you, especially now, is please take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon.